morning, everyone. Um, once again, thank you very much for attending this webinar. Um, as I said earlier, this is this webinar is hosted um, as a combination between Civil Institute and Agribusiness Media. So I am um, Civil is uh, coming on board as a technical partner. Um, uh, we I will give you more details about what we do, um, and then I will jump straight into making introductions for our. Um, our presenters for today. So today this webinar is going to be talking about um, uh, sweet potatoes and uh, the opportunities in the sweet potato value chain here in Zimbabwe. We've got a number of people that have come on board um, to help us to uh, conduct this discussion. Um, we're going to be talking about the production, um, the marketing, the value addition that's possible and the financing um, that farmers uh, can um, uh, can take uh, the opportunities that are available for financing um, in this for this specific crop. So my name is Belinda Chaura. Like uh, I might have said, I'm representing Severe Institute. Now Severe Institute is partnering with Agro Business Media to host this webinar um, because we train uh, small businesses, um, so uh, entrepreneurs. Um, including people who are farmers and um, just different sectors of the economy. So we are associated with other business media from that perspective. But I want to give more detail about other business media because we are representing them today. So if you want to know more about Severe Institute, I'll put a link into the chat area. So it's the very first link um, that's there. You can just click on that and then you can find out more about who we are. But today, uh, this webinar, like I said, is being hosted by Agribusiness Media. And so we are going to talk more about what they do. Um, so it's a multimedia digital platform that's for farmers. Um, so if you are a farmer and you want help, you want assistance, um, you want to join a community of like-minded individuals, Agribusiness um, Media um, is the, the platform for you. So um, there's a number of... Um, uh, initiatives under agribusiness medium so there's a magazine agribusiness magazine which is hosted monthly uh, and uh, reaches over 300,000 farmers it's free for farmers all you need to do is subscribe agribusiness talk which are the social media platforms i think somebody will be able to post the um the links onto the chat area uh, right now and then agribusiness direct directory um, which is a digital publication that connects farmers um, to agro inputs um, and service providers. And of course, Agribusiness TV, which is hosting um, uh, this platform. If you're watching on uh, Facebook, uh, you probably see it as Agribusiness TV. Um, and that platform is going to have a lot of content similar to this one um, going into the, um, the coming months. So uh, recorded conversations, um, uh, digital conversations that you can refer to um, with time. Uh, you can play back, you can watch again, you can share with other farmers who uh, need similar help. All of these platforms are free um, and discussions are going to be happening on different aspects of farming. Uh, anything that's related to farming, agribusiness media is going to be talking about it. So today, like I said, we want to talk about sweet potatoes um, and the opportunities that are available in, that, uh, in this value chain. So we've got a number of people that have come on board um, to help us to do this discussion. Uh, firstly, uh, before we go into the specifics of it, we are going to um, ask each of the presenters just to quickly talk about who they are, uh, the organization they represent, and what they do in that organization. I know I've asked three things, but please can you keep it brief to less than one minute, um, because we don't have much time and there's a lot of things for, for us to discuss. Um, so maybe I'll start with um, uh, Rollins Coffey, who's representing Agribusiness Media. You can go for it. And then we'll go to the Ministry of Agriculture, Mr. Uh, Chaoma, and then um, uh, Ms. Uh, it's about the farmer's school, and then uh, Beverly Kilpin, um, who's a farmer, and then uh, the Agricultural Marketing Authority, I think Mr. Chikanda, if he's on the call already, uh, Zimtrade, um, Mr. Miti, uh, and then uh, Mr. Ma, or is it Ms. Mabaya, 
that did I buy I'm not sure whether it's male or female sorry about that and then um, yeah so if you could just in that order uh, just quickly give us a an introduction of who you are what you do and the organization that you represent and then we'll jump straight into our discussion okay great uh, thank you uh, Belinda I'm rolling uh, coffee and I'm with uh, agribusiness media and as um, uh, per the introductions, Agribusiness Media is a multimedia farmers forum that is meant to address farm business issues by closing the knowledge gap in the agricultural industry. So we have a monthly magazine, like Belinda has said, it's a free publication for you farmers, and you are free to subscribe uh, by email or by WhatsApp. And uh, we also have a a digital platform or a social media platform, which is Agribusiness ZW or Agribusiness Talk. That's on Facebook as well as Twitter. It's a very interactive platform uh, that we believe is assisting in the migration from uh, subsistence farming to a more commercial uh, approach uh, that we believe will uh, promote agricultural productivity in the country. So this is uh, one of the initiatives, uh, weekly webinars, starting with this one on sweet potatoes. So we'll talk more on uh, the risk management or the risks involved in the sweet potato value chain and how best uh, as farmers we can mitigate uh, those risks. So in, 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 in brief, that's uh, us from agribusiness media. Good morning, everybody. My name is Beverly Kilpin Peel. I am a aspiring sweet potato farmer, uh, started off two years ago in um, Goromonzi South. My focus mainly has been on uh, uh, practicing production methods to meet global uh, gap certification. So my area of interest really is organic uh, sweet potato farming. Good morning. Uh, my name is Maxwell Chikanda. I uh, am a director in the Agricultural Marketing Authority, responsible for horticulture and livestock value chain, uh, specifically for the sweet potato, I am responsible for promoting production and productivity and market linkages, uh, as well as the value addition. Thank you. Okay, um, my name is Kupa Kwashe Midzi. I am a client manager uh, responsible for export development uh, at ZimTrade. We deal with um, horticulture farmers and basically try and capacitate them uh, in order to meet export market requirements. And um, sweet potato is one aspect that we are focusing on at ZimTrade and hoping to start uh, or to get farmers to start exporting sweet potatoes. Thank you very much. Right, I think that's fine. Uh, maybe those who haven't uh, introduced themselves yet, they will be able to introduce themselves um, as soon as they uh, join the call. So um, basically what we are doing um, is that we're going to uh, talk about different aspects of um, farming, of sweet potato farming and the opportunities that are available. What we're going to do is we're going to give each presenter um, just a few minutes, maybe about 10 uh, minutes to uh, go through their discussion uh, points uh, or the points that they have or their presentation. And then right at the end, we are going to take time to answer questions. So if you have a question and you feel like you're going to forget it, please post it into the chat area of the Zoom link now. Um, and then um, the different presenters maybe will see it and they'll start um, thinking about it and they'll be able to answer it when we get to the questions. Um, and then uh, hoping that if there's any uh, extra uh, assistance required, especially in this uh, area, uh, the presenters will be able to either give their phone numbers if they're comfortable, or email addresses if they're comfortable. If not, you can still get in touch with other business media um, they will be able to give you all the assistance you require either to get in touch with the specific individuals or to find a way to operationalize um, your business. So um, uh, we are also going to hopefully talk about financing. Um, so we might have somebody from um, 
the a specific bank um, would ask one of the bankers to be on board. Uh, if they are not on the call yet, that's fine. They'll be able to talk later. So I'll ask now, uh, firstly, um, uh, uh, from ZFC, um, are they on the call? Uh, if they are, maybe they can do a quick introduction and then uh, go into their discussion. Thank you. My, my, my name is Zivanai Gonzo. Uh, I'm the technical advisor with ZFC. And uh, at ZFC, we provide uh, crop nutrition and uh, crop protection solutions. And uh, I'm happy to join this uh, webinar. And I just want to have a quick, to make a quick <coughs> presentation as to how a sweet potato can be done you know, profitably. There's a lot that can be talked about, but I thought uh, just to bring out the, the, you know, the key issues in there. Uh, and uh, in the presentation, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to uh, talk about soil and climatic requirements, time of planting, uh, planting material, planting methods, crop nutrition and crop protection issues and uh, what sort of climatic and soil requirements uh, does, does, does the crop uh, you know, need. You know, uh, your sweet potato you know, requires suitable soil that is well drained, that is shallow, uh, preferably sandy loam, you no know, top soils. And these soils must be well drained you know, for better quality tubers uh, and, and the super color, smoother skin, and uh, less, you know, they are less likely to be affected by weevils. Poorly drained clay soils, you know, you result in irregularly shaped and misshapen tubers. So we encourage our farmers to do sweet potato in well-drained, shallow, and uh, loose soil. Uh, sweet potato is also, uh, uh, you know, sensitive to acidic conditions. So. Uh, the pH range that is desirable, you know, ranges from 5 to 6.5. So we urge our farmers to bring their soils uh, for analysis so that we analyze the soil for them and, and, and the profile, whatever, you know, remedies uh, that would be suitable for the, for the, for the, for the field. Uh, the climatic requirements of sweet potato, you know, it requires at least 110 to about 170 frost-free days because the crop is, you know, uh, sensitive uh, uh, to frost. So the crop can be grown in most parts of the country uh, during summer. Why during summer? Because that's the period where we have, you know, more heat units and uh, the yield is obviously, uh, you know, enhanced by, you know, a, a high heat units. Cool weather of say 10 degrees and below will retard you know, growth. And the planting time, we are saying the best planting time for, for better yields spans from September uh, up to February, where we benefit from, from, from the heat units. And delays in planting will result in the reduced yield and lower you know, starch levels in the, in, the, in, the, in the tubers. And we encourage our farmers to supplement uh, irrigation uh, where there is uh, little or irrig uh, I mean rain uh, during uh, the, the, the growing you know period. So what is the planting material that uh, is, is desirable? Uh, challenges, the biggest challenge in Zimbabwe affecting most uh, sweet potato farmers is, is poor quality you know planting material. People are re you know retaining material for more than five, six years. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, it, will be, it, it will result in, in, in uh, you know, virus affected uh, 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 cuttings being exchanged and uh, the disease pressure will obviously be high. So best planting material is tissue culture plantlets. Tissue culture plantlets are, you know, insect and disease free 
Uh, so we encourage farmers to get fish culture plant plates, you know, every three years to maintain quality and yield. And that there are a number of, you know, organizations that do tissue culture, uh, including your TRB, including your CEDIC and other, you know, private, you know, organizations. So we encourage farmers to come in with the tissue culture plant plates every, every three years. And uh, they can also uh, do, you know, the vine cuttings, which are the most common uh, in Zimbabwe, which are your, your cuttings that you get from previous vines, from previous crops, which should be about 30 to 40 centimeters uh, with six to seven nodes, you see. And uh, we encourage them to get terminal or middle section vines. Uh, these are the best since they are less likely to spread, you know, uh, viral diseases and other, you know, uh, diseases caused by, 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 you know, by, by, by nematodes. So we encourage farmers to get terminal or middle section fines. They can also use slips, which are your, which are your, you know, uh, the sprouts that we get from 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 sweet potato tubers after overwintering and they grow shoots, but slips have got uh, the major disadvantage that they spread, you know, diseases. If the tuba uh, had the nematodes, obviously the nematodes would be spread to the, to the, you know, to the new crop. If the, the, the tuba had the tuba moth or weevils, they would definitely be transferred. Uh, so what are the planting methods that are there? The most ideal and most common is planting on the ridges, uh, which must be between 30 and 45 centimeters high. They don't need to be very high because uh, they will end up, you know, drying faster uh, after 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 raining or irrigation. Uh, so we we encourage them farmers to use uh, to to plant on ridges that are 45 to, to, to about 30 to 45 centimeters high. And uh, from ridge to ridge, we are talking of about 0.9 to a meter. They can also plant their sweet potato uh, on, on mounds. Number two, they can uh, do the sweet potato uh, in furrows, you know, on the flat, and then uh, do the mounds later, uh, you know, to facilitate, you know, the, the tuber uh, growth. But in, in, in both cases, the intra row spacing should be around 20 to 30 centimeters. Uh, to aim or to achieve a plant population of about 30 to 40, you know, thousand plants uh, per hectare. And uh, uh, under crop nutrition, you know, a good fertilizer program must be based on soil analysis. So we encourage our farmers to bring their soils for analysis before they venture into, you know, sweet potato production. So that we recommend the correct fertilizer and the correct amount of fertilizer that they would require for you know a successful a, a, a project. So generally, we encourage uh, farmers to use about 300 to 350 kgs per hectare of uh, tobacco fat, which can be broadcast or uh, well placed. Alternative products uh, include your vegetable blend, your tobacco blend. Uh, or even your, your, your compound, you know, as your, 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 your seeded fat. And uh, when it comes to nitrogen, your, your, your crop does not need too much nitrogen because if you apply too much nitrogen, it will lead to rank growth. That is the vegetative growth uh, over your, your reproductive growth. So we just recommend about 120 kgs of nitrogen uh, at or before day 45 after planting. And uh, your, your sweet potato is a high requirement for calcium as well. So we encourage our farmers to come in with about 350 kgs per hectare of gypsum that they can broadcast directly on top of the ridges uh, uh, about five weeks after planting. You know, uh, calcium is important for strength to, to uh, improve the quality of your tube, it to improve the, the, the even the skin of the tube by to uh, cure uh, uh, nicely. Uh, so to promote bulking, you know, sweet potato, just like other, you know, potatoes, like your, your table potato, requires huge 
amount of potash for bulking purposes. So farmers must come in with a, a potash containing fertilizer like your FOP or uh, MOP, about 200 kgs per hectare of MOP that has to come in two to, two to four weeks after transplanting. So you can uh, combine your nitrogen and your potash uh, by applying just one product that we call the RFC Porito Super Top. It has got 23% nitrogen and 24% uh, potash that three has to come in, you know, um, two to four weeks after transplanting. Uh, this time you put 300 uh, kgs uh, uh, per, per hectare. So that is all about uh, uh, crop nutrition of the of the crop. But like I said, a good fertilizer program must be based on on full soil, uh, you know, analysis. And as uh, regards crop protection, uh, whenever you plant uh, any crop, it is threatened by either pests or diseases. So uh, sweet potato is not spared. Uh, there's uh, this common, you know, pest that is called a sweet potato weevil. This one is the most common and most devastating. You know, the weeds, you know, bore into stems and tubers, you know, causing, you know, an unpleasant smell and bitter taste. Mm -hmm. So the adult the female bores into stem and root and then lays eggs there. After the, lay, the eggs hatch, the larva feeds on the tubers, uh, creating, you know, uh, openings. And the openings also become a source of, you know, secondary infection. That's when you see your chupas, you know, rotting uh, after being predisposed to to to, to pore the chupa mode. So we encourage our farmers to come in with the, your clopiri force and, and, and your your cabaril, uh, especially when your pore, your sweet potato uh, starts to to, to flower. Uh, other you know other pests that affect the crop include your 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 leaf eaters, your caterpillars. And uh, we encourage our farmers to continually scout their fields and come in with the with with the remedies such as uh, diazinon, with remedies such as you know uh, your 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 spike extra uh, for the for the for the leaf eaters and other Leptoptera worms. There are also nematodes uh, which cause you know stunted and the and chlorotic growth and they predispose the plants to diseases as well. Uh, and they cause some, you know, tubers of some varieties to, to, to crack. So we encourage our farmers to practice good crop rotation and use clean planting material and as well plant, you know, a, a, a tolerant varieties. So in terms of chemicals, we encourage our farmers to come in with the, with nematicides such as your phenamiphos, your oxamu, especially uh, in the in the in the nursery, you know, period. And uh, other other diseases that may affect your 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 sweet potato include your 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 your, your viral in, uh, diseases like your sweet potato virus. And uh, as you know, viral diseases are difficult to cure. They have no cure. So we urge our farmers to select you know healthy planting material and rock out you know infected plants. Uh, so that the virus, you know, does not does not spread, and uh, there are also uh, fungal uh, diseases uh, which may affect the 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 the, the, the crop, and uh, we encourage our farmers to do you know cultural practices to control uh, such such uh, 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 diseases like uh, um, to avoid super damage. Uh, to cure tubers before storage and to destroy, you know, infected uh, tubers. But uh, if 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 the conditions are too, you know, uh, too much for the development of of, of viral diseases, of, of fungal diseases, like when there's too much rain and the the environment is conducive, there's a high humidity. Yeah, you can now invoke. Your, your 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 crop chemicals and uh, you can use your preventive sprays of copper and uh, mango zeb and uh, you can even control uh, the, the, the the fungal infections by use of your 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 control or curative products like the phenoconazole uh, or even uh, tepiconazole you can even invoke 
uh, the use of rhythm you got depending uh, on the situation. And uh, when, it's come, when it comes to, 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 to weeds, we always encourage our sweet potato farmers to keep the crop as weed free as possible, uh, especially during a time of uh, job uh, bulking, because some of the weeds uh, have uh, uh, pests and, uh, and, uh, and diseases. So there's, lot, there's a lot that we can talk about, but because of our limited time, I think I can, I can end here. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Gonzo, for that presentation. Uh, if you've got any questions, like I said, please post them into the chat area, and then uh, the presenters can then take them at the end. Um, we can go to Beverly Kilpin, who's a farmer, and then she can talk about her experiences um, in farming, uh, sweet potatoes, uh, how she's, you know, the, how you've managed to finance, what challenges have you faced, um, and maybe you can just point some uh, new farmers on this group on um, in what direction they can go to to get uh, success. So maybe uh, we can go to Beverly. Uh, you can go for it, and you can give us your presentation. Thank you. Um, briefly, I got into sweet potato production by default, really. Um, having lived in UK for a while, I uh, got accustomed to the orange flesh variety. So when I returned to Zimbabwe, I, um, you know, sought and uh, tried to find this product and I wasn't able to find it in any of the shops. Um, as time went on, I saw an advert of a, from a company called Turin. Uh, seeking um, contract producers for the sweet potato variety that I was looking for. Uh, cut a long story short, I was uh, unfortunately duped. I financed this through a loan from my daughter. Um, with that, I had to find some way of recovering my losses and utilize the few vines that he had managed to deliver. As time went on, we then saw the inferior quality of the vines. And um, my husband and I then decided to use our knowledge and expertise to improve the quality of the vine. And this um, exponentially increased whereby I started seeking networks of other sweet potato producers and um, with that um, met up with a couple of agronomists uh, who were producing sweet potatoes but not the orange flesh. I then linked up with the women in agriculture union, uh, put the proposal to them to find means and ways of mobilizing women where we can um, network and uh, watch each other's back, so to speak, because so many people were looking for opportunities, for export opportunities and seeking what markets they might be available. Um, from my research, uh, incidentally, our farm is called the Research Station. From my research, I came across the Ugandan and the Kenyan model of um, government support for women uh, farmers. And with the help of USAID, we mobilized, I think, 3,000 women, uh, which was a way of empowering and improving the livelihood of the, uh, the women. So with that uh, as my objective, we then, in this group, Women in Our Cultural Group, started uh, presenting to them the export potential for the orange sweet uh, variety. Unfortunately, export is limited because of the regulations and restrictive um, uh, uh, regulations which are global gap certification. 
So we then devised a, a, a training program called Export Ready, uh, starting small and uh, with that growing to identify uh, the market, linking up with uh, other farmers, ex-wide farmers who were exporting. So that is where the challenge is at the moment. The um, economies of scale and identifying uh, buyers with integrity who are able to, to take off our produce. Um, as time went on, we also linked up with fertilizer companies that are producing organic fertilizers, uh, organic sprays. Um, the groups have grown. There are a number, a lot, quite a number of sweet potato groups. But for our women's group, I think we are on track as we finally have linkages. And as I'm in the UK right now, I have seen the potential um, for our sweet potatoes because some of the quality is not good but because of other um, political factors of uh, most of the farmers are on um, land reform. As land reform beneficiaries, there has been uh, restrictions. But I've linked up with the uh, representative of Global Gap, uh, who has assured us that uh, come next year, that will not be a hindrance for farmers that are seriously producing, but following the guidelines of organic production. I think uh, that's really all I have to share for now, but I am open to questions uh, at the end of the session. Thank you. Okay. Maybe before we go, Beverly, um, uh, talk about women's groups. Uh, if you could also just, uh, uh, I don't know if you have done that already, you can uh, just indicate in the chat area maybe how people can get in touch with you, uh, either by email, um, uh, to if, because there's a number of women on this group who might be interested in uh, becoming a part of that. So if you're able to just post your contact details or an email or if you're comfortable with the phone number. Um, for now, and then as questions come, I'm sure they'll be taken at the end. Okay, I'll share my phone number. I'm just learning. I'm not techno savvy. It was my first time I've logged into Zoom. So my telephone number is 0772-908-901. Okay, all right. That's fine. Thank you very much, Beverly. Um, yeah, so now I would like to go, um, you mentioned a number of uh, uh, challenges that you faced when you were trying to export. Um, I will uh, run through our remaining presentations, uh, I think, in this order. Maybe we can start with um, the Agricultural Marketing Authority, Mr. Chikanda, uh, who can talk about the local market and the support. Um, that the Agricultural Marketing Authority provides for farmers. And then after that, we can go into Zim Trade, who are going to talk about uh, export markets. Uh, and then we'll come back to uh, Roland's coffee, who's going to talk to us about gross margins and risk uh, management. Um, uh, just trying on uh, some of the points, I'm sure that will come through from Zim Trade and from Agricultural Marketing Authority. But if we could go in that order, um, if Mr. Chikanda is available, um, you can go for it. Hey, thank you, ma'am. Uh, once again, my name is Chikanda Maxwell. I'm responsible for horticulture and livestock value chain. In uh, relation to sweet potato, which is classified as a horticulture crop, uh, yeah. is AMA, we are responsible in terms of identifying and registering all farmers that are interested in the production of the crop, specifically with the objective of 
specifically with the objective of uh, linking them to the various markets and uh, we and oh, and and and, and the financial uh, uh, supporters uh, in terms of uh, be they uh, financial institutions who are interested in financing the the crop or contractors who have registered uh, with the AMA for purpose of uh, sourcing and securing the commodity as well as uh, perhaps engaging with the mass markets such as Mbare Musika, uh, Bulawayo, Mutare mass markets which from time to time buy the commodity uh, on a uh, quality driven uh, basis. Uh, so far we were working with the, or we are currently working with Agribank who is interested in putting up a horticulture facility which will finance all the farmers who are interested in venturing into various horticulture commodities. And sweet potato is one of the crop which we are currently uh, supporting. So we encourage all interested and aspiring farmers to register with the authority so that we can quantify and assess their requirements uh, for either planting material, uh, the various fertilizer regimes, the chemicals that might be needed, and also even the packaging, the containers that uh, are critical in making sure that uh, the crop gets to the market without any bruises or injuries which will contribute to rotting. Um, we would also perhaps want to link them up with the technical experts who assist the farmers in terms of knowledge skills for them to be able to produce a, a quality crop which is demanded by the market uh, without uh, uh, putting uh, too much fertilizers, without putting too much chemicals which will end up the crop being rejected at the market. We want to con contribute to market-led production where farmers really produce set varieties uh, for specific markets which require specific sizes and as such our responsibility will be linking with the experts that will provide farmers with the technical knowledge, technical skills that will assist them in producing a product that is demanded by the various uh, targets markets that are locally available. Uh, right now, we are also interested in registering uh, the nurseries that are propagating the disease-free uh, planting material, which has been mentioned by the first presenter from um, ZFC who presented first and uh, we will then be in a position to use our various uh, platforms for purpose of linking such farmers uh, to the suppliers of those uh, uh, planting materials that are critical in producing disease-free uh, crops that uh, then meet the requirements of the market. We currently also registering the off-takers so that for purpose of linking them with the various farmers who they have gone into production, we realize that uh, with the competition of um, uh, maize between human and livestock, potatoes provide a key role in meeting food and nutrition security. And as such, we want to encourage as many farmers as possible to venture into this lucrative uh, crop which we believe has got great opportunities in terms of employment creation, income generation for farm households. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you touched on a number of interesting issues. Uh, you said uh, you uh, take registrations for people who are interested in uh, getting into farming. Um, and I think one of the first comments that was made was by a lady who was saying she wants to get into farming. 
maybe you can uh, even now um, as part of your presentation can you just uh, uh, give people an idea of how they can do that is their phone number email address or a physical location where they can go in order to register and uh, what are the requirements do they have to have land already um, if so what is the minimum hectare um, and uh, yeah, do they have to uh, provide part of the financing, anything like that? If there's any requirements, maybe you can just share them quickly right now. Basically, the forms are available from uh, AMA offices. Our head office is at uh, number 8 Lemon Road, uh, Mount Pleasant, or for extension, second uh, street extension, or Semunjoma extension. Um, we also have various uh, offices in uh, the eight provinces where they can also obtain forms, uh, but if they send their email requesting uh, the forms, they can send them on mchikanda at ama.co.zw. I'll repeat, mchikanda at ama .co.zw. I will also try and post it on the chat platform. Uh, they can also send the, a request for registration form on jmanduna at ama.co.zw. Uh, the registration fee is just one dollar or equivalent at auction a uh, rate, prevailing auction rate, which is currently, I think the latest is 81.7 uh, uh, or 8 as of yesterday. Um, basically, that is to facilitate uh, uh, the communication and the documentation which is uh, required for farmers. In terms of land requirements, uh, we, we, we don't have a limit. Uh, any hectare or space or even backyard space a person uh, is in, uh, have access to is uh, allowed. Or what we are interested in is uh, trying to quantify the various players that are into the production of the crop for us to be able to quantify the potential crop that will be going on the market and uh, with at, at, and to estimate at what time so that we avoid excess supply uh, which will lead to crash of prices. Uh, where we believe that there will be excess supply, we will then also link up with Zintred in trying to uh, promote export markets where, which will then lead to maintenance of good prices for the farm households that are interested in the crop. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chikanda. Um, so if anyone is interested, I'll just repeat, um, he said uh, you can go to their office, which is Eglimon Road in Mount Pleasant, um, and they've also got offices in the eight provinces across the country. And uh, if you want to register, you can get the registration forms there. Uh, that's if you want to register for, uh, for the facility that will help uh, to grow um, the uh, super crop. Um, and uh, with assistance to uh, grow it and then also assistance to send it to market. Uh, the registration fee is one US dollar uh, or the equivalent at the uh, auction rate. So, and there's no limit of land space. Um, so anyone is able to, to sign up for that. So uh, if you've got any questions for him later on, please hold on to them or you can post them into the chat area and then he will tackle them later. I'd like to now invite uh, Zintrade to give us their presentation. Um, and I'm sure there's some uh, comments that were made by Beverly and some comments as well that were made by um, uh, our last presenter from the Agricultural Marketing uh, Authority, who just talked about um, some of the potential synergies between Zintrade and farmers. So um, maybe if you could also tackle that in your presentation. Uh, and you can go for it. Uh, I think our presenter, Papa Shemiti, uh, I think you've got um, 15 minutes. Uh, well, yeah. I think as, as I introduced myself earlier on, my name is Kupapa Shemiti. 
I am a client manager uh, in the export development department at SimTrade. Um, and I just, I just thought that um, in case there are some people who don't know uh, about SimTrade, SimTrade is, uh, we, are national, we are the national trade development and promotion organization uh, for Zimbabwe. And uh, our mandate is basically to energize Zimbabwe's export growth. Um, and in terms of how we, we endeavor to achieve this, and I think I hope this will also um, uh, answer the, the earlier question uh, that you mentioned. Um, basically, we try and facilitate and support uh, existing exporters who would be exporters um, through various services that we provide. And these are basically broken down into four. Um, and I, I will not go into much detail on the service portfolio. If there's any need for any further clarity, I'm sure I'll share my details and we can always pick up the conversations later. But basically, um, the four main uh, services that we provide are market intelligence, uh, which I think is actually going to form um, the base of my, my, my sharing today, wherein we share information about markets, potential markets, export opportunities that exist out there, uh, for the benefit of uh, potential and existing exporters. Um, we also do uh, what we call um, export development. And in export development, basically what we try, what we, what we, which is the department that I'm in. Okay, I think now I can, I can share my screen. Thank you very much for that. Um, so let me just... Can you all see uh, the screen now? Yes. Okay, perfect. So as I was saying, um, our other service is export development. Here we now basically try to, well, we deal with those would-be exporters who are in need of capacity building, technical intervention, and uh, expertise, and we provide support to um, any and all would-be exporters who are in need in this, uh, of this uh, export development. Then we also have what we call export promotion, and here we uh, promote exports through participation in trade fairs um, and base or uh, buyer-seller missions. Basically, the idea here is to bring uh, local producers or local exporters closer to the market where you can then interact with potential buyers. And then the, the last and final uh, aspect of our services is advocacy. Uh, which basically involves uh, situations where exporters might be facing challenges with uh, regulatory authorities or they might have recommendations in order to make their doing business environment better. And basically, we then assist exporters in, um, in that regard. Now, moving on to the main reason why we're here today, which is uh, your sweet potatoes. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, I'm sorry, I, forgot, I, I didn't get the name um, of, of, I think she was the first presenter uh, when she was uh, presenting. Um, she mentioned one important aspect that I think uh, all participants here as well uh, need to be uh, cognizant of in terms of when she was speaking. I think uh, most of you can recall that she mentioned the yellow flesh variety. Uh, so um, from a Zimtrade point of view, when we're talking about exports, I think it's important to note that um, basically even all the information that I'm going to be sharing uh, for in, in terms of um, markets, uh, it's, it, it's with regards to this yellow flesh, variety, the yellow flesh variety, not the usual white flesh variety that we are all um, used to and we love here in Zimbabwe. So um, um, I will be sharing the names of the varieties as well later on. Uh, but basically here I'm just trying, I was also trying to um, put it into perspective in terms of what the global market of sweet potatoes looks like or looked like in the past five years. And as you can see, um, there has been a growth uh, um, of, of, of um, the global imports of sweet potatoes, where in 2015, the global imports were uh, almost 400 million. Um, and in 2019, we're sitting at, at, at around 685 million. As you can see, there has been a steady growth, with, which basically means that the market is there and it's growing uh, for sweet potatoes. Um, and it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an opportunity that as Zimbabweans, we can tap into. And in terms of, um, obviously, the next question would be, who are these, uh, or who are these top countries that are importing uh, these sweet potatoes? Um, and so you'll find that um, if you look at, um, if you analyze the statistics for the past five years, 
the two major importers of sweet potatoes have been the UK and the Netherlands. And actually from 2015 up to 2018, the largest importer was the UK and the Netherlands has since taken over in 2019. We're not sure if this is going to be, uh, the situation is going to be prevailing going forward. But basically, um, the Netherlands and the UK are the top global importers of sweet potatoes, where the Netherlands accounted for 21% of global imports, and um, the UK alone accounted for 16%. And then you also have in the top 10 countries like Germany, Canada, France, Belgium, Japan, Thailand. And I, um, I think it's also important to, to, to highlight at this stage that in terms of um, quantities, uh, globally, uh, in 2019, the um, total imported tonnage uh, was about 824,000 kilos, or 824,000, um, uh, sorry, 824,000 tons um, of, of, of sweet potatoes were imported globally. And uh, as I mentioned, the Netherlands was the top importer, and uh, they imported um, 151,681. Sure. sure. Uh, um, uh, tons of sweet potatoes and the UK stood at 137,000 and in terms of prices I know obviously uh, again that's a very important aspect that we uh, are interested in as, as growers or as potential exporters um, the global price per ton for, 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 for sweet potatoes was $831 uh, per ton um, and then the Netherlands alone their price stood at 958 US dollars per ton and the UK uh, had uh, their, their average price was 784. And I think the, 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 the market with the highest price in 2019 was actually Germany, uh, which uh, in terms of tonnage, it, it, it only imported about 40,000 tons. But then in terms of price, it stood at uh, 1,436 US dollars per ton um, of sweet potatoes. So I just thought I would share this information to give you um, a perspective as, as, as you uh, heard all, uh, all, all the other information you want to get into the, 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 the growing of sweet potatoes. Obviously these uh, figures in terms of who the largest importers are and um, these basically present potential markets for you and what the pricing looks like. And on this slide I was also um, basically, I'm basically showing everyone the um, uh, export windows that are available. So this is actually coming from, uh, well, we're looking at it from the Netherlands point of view, and uh, this is an availability calendar for um, sweet potatoes. What, I, what, what I'm trying to say here is, if you can look at the, 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 the first row, that's the United States. So the United States is one of the biggest suppliers um, of sweet potatoes globally. And um, basically they um, almost always have sweet potatoes available in season. And you're also looking at Senegal. Um, again, they, 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 they uh, almost always have uh, sweet potatoes in season. Why this is important, it also gives you as growers a perspective in terms of who your competition is going to be if you're going to go into these markets. And then you also have the likes of Portugal and the likes of Spain. So um, this availability calendar, uh, I think I would say lucky for us, we managed to get it from some um, uh, potential buyers in the Netherlands. And basically the indication in terms of supply window or potential supply window for Zimbabwe, um, you're looking at that period between April and September. If we can manage to grow our seed potatoes and start supplying or target supplying the European markets during that period, that's the time when you can get some of these um, lucrative prices. As I mentioned, some of the prices that I mentioned, uh, those are average prices. So as, as you may all appreciate when, in, in uh, fresh produce, you have the highs and the lows in terms of um, pricing uh, in the market. So if you can manage to grow and target for that period, then you might get yourself um, uh, some very good prices out of the market. And this is also just a, a, a picture to show you um, how uh, 
sweet potatoes are packaged in, 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 in the Netherlands, in Europe. And uh, at the bottom there, those are names of uh, potential of, or, or, or basically buyers of sweet potatoes in Europe. And if you can manage to convince them to start, start supplying your uh, sweet potatoes, or sorry, if I may just go back um, to the previous slide. At the far left here, um, this is your, your varieties. I had mentioned earlier on that I would, I, would, I would then mention the varieties that you need to know or that you need to grow if you're trying to target the European market. That's your Berrugard and Covington varieties not our, our our white flesh varieties. So these are your yellow flesh varieties. And um, I'm pretty sure some uh, who may have uh, uh, benefited or who may have uh, had to taste these varieties, you'll appreciate that they also actually have a different texture and a different taste compared to our, our, our local ones. So, and please take note, if you try to get a market, if you try to export our usual white flesh varieties, you will not get the market. So it's important to know the varieties that are in demand in some of these markets before you rush to produce um, and, and, and start looking for markets. Um, so as I was saying, in terms of packaging, I, I, I do have a slide later on which speaks on uh, some of the packaging requirements. So some exports um, in those boxes that you can see on the far left. And then on the middle there, this is your bulk packaging where the produce goes in the form of bins. Uh, bulk bins and um, then the, 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 the buyer or the importer would then they themselves would then uh, do the selection and then in terms of shape on the far right um, that's usually the preferred shape I think as, as some of you may have may appreciate um, uh, there, there are some I think they in, in terms of how they most Europeans would then want to have their produce it's, it's at times in the form of chips sweet potato chips so in terms of the shape they have to be shaped in the form where uh, upon cutting, um, uh, the, the, the buyer can make chips out of them. Um, so basically, that's it. Um, please forgive me. I'm trying to rush through and make sure that I uh, cover all the aspects within the five minutes that I've been given. Um, so in terms of the requirements in the, from an export markets point of view, I think um, some of these areas have already been touched on, um, especially, so the first important aspect that we need to take note of is that um, whenever you want to export, each shipment has to be accompanied by a um, complete set of documentation. And it doesn't matter where the, uh, the size of the consignment, whether you're, you're exporting a 30 foot container or you're exporting 10 kgs worth of product. And these are um, your set of documentation. These include your CD1 form, your agro dealer certificate, your phytosanitary certificates, and the like. And um, the second aspect, which, um, as I mentioned, I think it's already been mentioned, so there's no need for me to repeat that, that you need to get an agro uh, dealer or agro producer certificate from AMA, and they've already given their address. Um, and if for those who might not know where AMA is and you know where Zimtrade is, we're literally uh, across from each other. Um, so if you come to Zimtrade, you can literally see, you can, it, it's a stone throw away literally uh, at the Agricultural Marketing Authority. And then you also need to get an export permit from the Ministry of Lands, Agriculture and Rural Settlement. And um, it's issued for a specific quantity and a time period. Um, and uh, in terms of where they are located, they are at number one Borodale Road soon after the, the State House um, and their building is called Ngungunyana Building. Um, then you also need to get a um, phytosanitary certificate and uh, this is uh, obtained from the Plant Quarantine and Research Institute. Um, so they have offices in Mazoe or uh, at the Arari Airport office and this basically uh, is a certificate that uh, attests that your product meets the phyto requirements. This is, this is basically uh, an assessment in terms of you know the chemicals that you've applied and the residue levels uh, if any that's uh, remaining on your product um, and um, you also need uh, to complete a CD1 form but basically the, um, this can be obtained from your bank and it's an exchange control requirement and um, there's no two ways about it uh, in terms of getting a CD1 form and you can talk to your bank about that process and then you then need to process your bill of entry with um, Zimra at Kurima House. So, and it's important to note that um, this is just a basic process flow. And uh, some markets will specify other documents that are outside of uh, these basic 
uh, documents that I've mentioned. So it's important to note that when you then want to start exporting, you need to understand from the market's point of view what their uh, regulatory or even voluntary requirements are. And um, you also need, um, when you're dealing with the European market, um, you also need certain certifications. I've got a slide on that, uh, such as Global Gap. And um, it's also important to know that you need to engage a consultant um, who specializes in, uh, in the particular specification, uh, sorry, certification schemes or food safety standards requirement by, required by your market. And um, I think for Global Gap, we, we do have, for those who may know him, we do have one of, the, one of those uh, consultants is Clarence Mwale. And um, I think it's a name that resonates across uh, most farmers or agricultural uh, people. And then you need to also engage the life license certification body and will, will be specialized in the certification scheme because at times you might um, uh, engage a certification body that is not licensed and you end up spending so much money on getting a certification that will not be recognized in the, in the, in the respective market. And it's also important to note that um, when you're dealing with the European market, you need to comply with certain legislation and these legislation includes, and they're listed here, uh, control of contaminants in foodstuffs, control of pesticide residues, health control, uh, plant health control, traceability, compliance, and uh, labeling and um, uh, voluntary. And I think someone mentioned the issue of organic production. There are some um, uh, as well voluntary uh, compliance uh, requirements that um, if you then want to have your product certified organic because I think one one other aspect that uh, we most Zimbabweans mistake is um, we might be growing produce organically or um, with minimum use of, ke of chemicals but then um, it's not organic unless it's certified organic so you might believe you can go tell whoever you want that uh, you produce this uh, um, sweet potato organically, but you don't, if you don't have a certification, then you don't have the evidence or the proof that it, it was organically certified. So uh, basically that, that, that's one thing that's worth noting. So uh, coming back to packaging, um, in terms of the requirements, I know I spoke a bit about it, but um, like I said, the requirements would differ between the customers and the markets, as I mentioned earlier, some would then require that you bring them in the boxes, uh, like shown earlier, or like you can see in the picture there, or some uh, would require that you uh, supply them in bulk, um, bulk bins. And um, so in terms of how they must be packed, they must be packed to protect the produce properly, and uh, the packaging needs to be new and clean and uh, of high quality to prevent damage to the, project, uh, to the product. And, um, in terms of labeling, uh, this is specific again to the to the to to EU to the EU. Um, you must take note of the name of the food in this case, which is your sweet potato, uh, the net quantity of the produce, the country of origin, the name under which the product is sold, which is probably your company name, or if you're going through another uh, person or consolidator, uh, durability date, and the storage conditions. And it's also no, uh, worth noting that it's now mandatory um, to include the nutritional declaration. And um, I think, again, you need to then take your produce uh, for testing. And in terms of the labeling itself, uh, it's also worth noting that the ink that is used on the label must not be toxic ink or glue when you're labeling. Um, then, as I mentioned earlier, there are some um, voluntary standards, but what is uh, what has since been a prevailing trend when you're dealing, especially with the European Union market? Uh, global gap certification is not a mandatory requirement, but then you will not be able to access the market if you don't if you're not global gap certified. This is um, this has since become uh, uh, um, the norm that your buyers in the EU will require that you're global gap certified, and. So you need to take note of this if you're going to be looking at those markets. And um, this is basically a, a, a standard which is designed to assure customers about how you produce your food on the farm. And it also covers issues of the chemicals that you use, the labor um, uh, that you use. Are you treating your workers healthy? Are the workers healthy? Are they safe? And as well, your animals that you have, if you have animals on the farm. Then you also have other certifications like fair trade, which is an independent, again, uh, uh, and, and, and 
for-profit organization which promotes sustainable development and poverty alleviation for 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 for, for the sorry and it sets the fair trade standards and these Basically, uh, if you comply with these, uh, it can enhance your price again in the market. You have an extra bargaining chip when you're dealing with buyers if you have uh, some of these um, uh, certifications. But then, um, again, also important to note, the minimum voluntary requirement in terms of the European Union is the global gap. You can still access the market with just global gap and as well the mandatory requirements and without the other uh, fair trade organic certification. But like, like I said, if you want to then get a premium price on a produce, obviously it's important to then uh, look at other standards. Um, I think this basically brings me to the end of my presentation and I just wanted to, 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 to leave with um, uh, these few points. Um, we just, I think when, you, when you're dealing with uh, exports, I think one important aspect that even in Zimbabwe we always spoke about is competitiveness. We need to be competitive for us to be able to, explain, to export sustainably. And the issue of regulatory and, and voluntary standards can never be overlooked and can never be ignored. We need to adhere to these quality and food safety standards if we're going to make it in these markets. And um, we can also um, achieve price competitiveness through improved efficiency. This comes back to us. How are, we do, how are we handling our businesses? How are we handling our, our, our production? Um, and we can, take, we, we, can, we can take things a step further if we're efficient and uh, we can then be price competitive. And we also need to develop strong value chains that are geared for exports. Um, I think this is self-explanatory. When you're, when you're producing um, value chain, you can even be talking about your logistics. You need to have your logistics in order. You need to have your your input supplies in order. You need to have everything in order for you to uh, to to make it. And I think one other important aspect is uh, value addition. You find that um, a simple thing, a simple process uh, like cutting those sweet potatoes. If you grow the require, if you grow the required uh, varieties, if you take it a step further, and like I mentioned, one of the uh, most or the the the, the most utilized way or uh, ways in which um, the sweet potatoes are consumed as, as, as sweet potato chips. If you simply cut the sweet potatoes into chips and you package them uh, as sweet potato chips, you can uh, enhance your value in terms of your exports uh, by, by merely uh, cutting uh, those sweet potatoes. So you need to consider that. And the is aspect of research is very important. Um, I think one issue that most farmers, uh, one mistake most farmers make is you grow and then you start looking for the market afterwards. We always, as Zemtrade, we always recommend you need to look for the market first and then um, commit to what you can do uh, or supply and then you start growing for the market rather than uh, uh, marketing your produce at the end of um, the season. And um, we need to promote products in the region and beyond. We need to improve the ease of doing export business and it's an aspect that we, as Zimtrade, we're very passionate about. And um, we also need to leverage an existing trade agreement. Zimbabwe is, is, is a signatory to the Economic Partner, Partnership Agreement with um, the EU, which gives us duty-free, quota-free access to the market. And we also have other, uh, other trade agreements um, in the region. We are signatory to SADC, COMESA, the African Continental Free Trade Area, and we even have other bilateral agreements with some uh, companies in the region. So we need to um, leverage on, on these agreements as they all make us make our products more competitive, and we need to make use of uh, resources being offered by uh, development corporation partners. We have, um, I think, one aspect that I, 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 I is, impo is important to note is um, we on export development. We have technical intervention programs where um, we have an MOU with an organisation called PUM, which is an organisation of senior experts based in the Netherlands, and they basically assist. Uh, farmers, in this case, they can assist farmers in varying areas of your production. It can be your uh, agronomy issues, it can be your water issues, it can be your soil issues, and these services come free, basically. Um, if you apply for the services and you're granted, you, all you have to do is take care of the, the, the experts' local accommodation and food. 
and if uh, and travel if you need to take them anywhere in terms of their international tickets that's catered for by the organization so it's um it's in it, these are resources that are available for at our disposal at the moment because of covid they're only doing this through uh, what they're calling remote coaching but you, uh, there's still a lot of people who are benefiting through even the remote coaching. You get at, uh, expert advice for free. And uh, I think it's something that we need to consider. And then obviously market diversification is an important aspect. So uh, in terms of how uh, we can be contacted, that's our website, uh, Zim Trade, uh, inform our trade information portal, www.tradesimbabwe.co.zw. Some of the information that I've already shared here is available on the website through newsletters, uh, articles, and um, uh, they're very other. I think there's a lot of information that might be beneficial to a lot of people here. And in terms of um, that's our phone number, and our head office is located at number 188 Second Street Extension, um, just after the robot, that's um, after the SPCA turn. Uh, if you look to your left, and I think um, right now, if you wish to visit, there's a lot of construction going on, so you won't miss it. And then we also have a, an office in Lueo at number 48, Josiah Tungoga. Thank you very much for that informed presentation. Um, just wanted to ask very quickly, um, so you were saying the organization form uh, available for remote coaching. So if somebody wants to sign up for that now, is that possible? Um, and um, how does that work? Okay, um, let me get the link and send it on the group chat. But yes, it's available now. Uh, basically, you submit through your application and indicate the area of expertise which you require. And then um, all they'll simply have to do is search through their database. They have over 2,000 experts, and um, they'll search through their database. If they find someone who they believe is fit for what you've mentioned you require, they'll uh, assign that person to you, but you still have to approve. You go through their CV, and if you're happy with it, you approve, and then that process starts. If you're not happy, you can always request for another uh, expert. But yes, it's basically available. It's open now, and it's available. I'll be sending through the link um, for people to apply uh, on the chat platform. Okay, confirm. You also said it's, is it free or do they have to pay something? So it's free. The arrangement is that uh, PUM will cater for the experts' international travel costs. And then um, you as a farmer here, yeah, all you simply have, literally what you have to do is go and pick up the, the expert at the airport. And even in terms of accommodation, these experts are not fussy. They will not require to be set up at your um, Meekles Hotel or your, uh, you know, Cresta Lodges and the like. You can even set them up at, uh, if it's within an area, you can set them up at, at, at a decent lodge or if you actually have a farmhouse um, because most of these people uh, actually live on farmhouses as long as it's, it's, it's decent and habitable. They, 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 you can always put them up there and then you cater for their uh, food while they're here and that's it. Okay, all right, brilliant. So please, um, uh, you can post the link and I'm sure you have a lot of people uh, signing up for that. Um, and uh, if you, again, if you've got questions for Kupapashe, you can compile those um, by posting them onto the chat platform. A number of people are asking whether we're going to share these presentations Yes, we are. Uh, so to the presenters, please may you um, uh, send your presentations. Um, uh, we'll post email addresses uh, or we'll send you our email addresses directly. I'm sure you have them already, but just in case, um, you can uh, also just uh, send us the presentations and then we can send them out to everybody. So if you want a, a copy of this presentation, um, please send an email to um, or post your email on the chat platform and then we'll be able to send those out to you. Now I'll invite Roland's Kofi to talk about, um, we've heard a number of things from Simtrade um, and from uh, Agricultural Marketing Authority and the Zimbabwe Fertilizer Company. Uh, I would like to invite Roland's Kofi to just talk about more in detail. I think we're going back into the local market, um, just gross margins uh, at a local level um, what are the inputs, the cost of the inputs um, and your potential profits um, at a local level and how to manage risk 
what are the potential um, uh, challenges that you might face and how can you manage the risk associated with those challenges and that would be the same for any business um, the you're more likely to make a profit if you know how to manage your risk so Roland um, please can you uh, uh, go for it um, and I think uh, as part of his presentation um, he wanted to get a farmer um, Dadirai Mabaya to also do a presentation, but I think that Dadirai is struggling with network. So we'll just see, maybe we can um, uh, MacGyver her on <laughs> by getting her onto a call um, and maybe she can do a quick contribution. Um, if that doesn't work, um, it's fine. Um, there are, like I said, other presentations that are going to be done by Agribusiness uh, TV uh, in the coming uh, weeks um, as they are doing more uh, webinars like this. Um, they might be able to then get um, some of the people who are not able to just join the call today. Um, they might be able to get them in the coming weeks. So, Roland, uh, please go for it. Sure. Uh, thank you, Belinda. I'll start off with uh, the gross margin. I'm trying to share here. Uh, just confirm you are seeing my screen. Yes, we can see your screen. Ah, okay, good. So this is a gross margin budget, and that's for uh, one hectare. And before we discuss the, the gross margin, it is very important to know that successful farm businesses uh, are usually market-driven, uh, like Kupakwashe has is emphasized. Uh, before investing into, into production, we encourage farmers to invest into a research and then secure a market um, to, to ensure a sustainable farm business operation that is uh, market uh, driven. So the key questions that you need to, to answer when you're doing your market research is who is going to buy your, your product? Uh, at what price? Where are they based? Do they want you to deliver or they will come and collect it from your farm? and what are any hidden cost of, uh, of selling. Uh, then also you need to know, uh, more importantly, the, the options of adding value to your, to your produce. Uh, these are key questions that you need to, to answer and uh, how best you can package your, your produce uh, before uh, it reaches to, uh, to the consumer. So you need to, to answer these questions first, then also, you need to get uh, training and always get trained from uh, professionals. You know, the government is uh, various institutions that do some short courses and there are a number of consultants that are also doing some, some, some trainings. And just ensure that the training that you are attending covers the basics and not only the technical side, but also the business side of, uh, of farming. So, so your training should basically cover uh, issues like the land preparation, the uh, varieties, uh, in this case for sweet potatoes, uh, the fertilizing requirements, the management, that is your record keeping, your marketing, uh, and also your accounting uh, requirements, the pests and diseases, uh, possible pro problems and, and, and possible solutions uh, to your business. And also to cover harvesting and storage and, and transportation issues. So you also need to assess the soil quality and, and, and water uh, availability prior to actual production, not to go into production, then later on realize that you don't have uh, the, the, the right uh, quantities in, in, in terms of water uh, or the right quality in terms of, uh, of, of soil, uh, soil fertility. So we also encourage farmers to send their soils for, for analysis, like Mr. Gonzo said, uh, ZFC offers such, such a service that you may need to, to take advantage of, and also to ensure that you have a reliable water supply. It is also important to visit successful and uh, unsuccessful farms. So there you get to uh, learn hands-on uh, why farmer A failed or why farmer B is successful in their businesses. And ask a lot of questions when, when you request for, 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 for these visits. Uh, how they started, you know, the, the challenges they are facing, 
uh, how they maneuvered when they faced the problems. And we also encourage you to subscribe to uh, reading material with, with some free magazine that we publish every month and also our social media platforms. Just, just make use of them and spend more time uh, acquiring knowledge on the business that you are interested uh, in. So if you are going for, for a large scale operation, we strongly encourage that you get an agribusiness consultant or a qualified agronomist to, to assist you. Um, these are some of the keys to, to your success. So going to uh, the margins or, or, or the figures, you expected yield levels for sweet potatoes, uh, that's about 20,000 kgs, that's per hectare, or 20 tons per hectare. And the selling price uh, when we did this gross margin was uh, averaging 40 cents per kg. So what you're expecting there per hectare is about $8,000 in terms of um, uh, US dollars. Uh, that's the gross income or the total income from, from sales. Then your variable cost should not exceed 2,800. So that's around 2,789. Then that leaves you with a gross profit of just above 5,000, which is a 65% margin so which clearly indicates that uh, sweet potatoes are, are a, a high value uh, crop so the variable cost items uh, if we try and, and and break them down here we we get prior to harvesting for your land preparation uh, for your fertilizer your pest control and your disease control you need for labor for instance prior to harvesting you need uh, that's 45 labor days uh, and that's 135 US dollars. And vines, you need about 37,000 or 100 uh, bags per hectare. Uh, but it's better to go um, by, by units or the number of vines than the number of, uh, of, of bags. So that will cost you not more than 1,500 US per hectare. Then uh, your tractor and equipment for land preparation, that's fuel alone will cost you, you need about um, 146 US dollars. Then for fertilizers, before determining how much uh, fertilizer you need, it is important to get uh, your soil tested. So you need the uh, compound C and also uh, AEN, and that will cost you $264 and $68 uh, respectively. Then for pest control, uh, you need Oxamu and also Cabaril. Uh, and that's $28 and $15 uh, respectively. So the total or the subtotal for, for, your, for your variable cost items should not exceed, prior to harvesting, should not exceed 2,300. So that's around 2,240 US dollars. Then uh, after harvesting or from harvesting to marketing, your costs are around $549, which uh, makes a total of 2,789 uh, or $2,800. So the budget is in US dollar, uh, but it is also important to, to ensure that you get uh, current quotations from, from suppliers because the prices may, may change or may have changed after the budget was, was prepared. So this is uh, an overview of, of how much you can get from uh, a hectare of, of sweet potatoes. So from there, we quickly go into the local production uh, trains. So on the local production trains, I'm trying to show, to, to, to share the screen here, just a moment, yes. So on the production uh, trains locally, and this is, is based on the agri survey by the Zimbabwe Agricultural Show Society. So from 2011 to 2012, we did very well. Um, our yield increased by 960% uh, in 2011, then in 2012 by 726%, uh, and also our hectareage uh, increased by, by 28%. Uh, and over the years, we've seen an increase in, in our local production 
uh, of about 23.26% on average, and also uh, an average yield increase of 3.23%. So locally, we, we are producing uh, about 88,248 tons per year against a requirement of 303,000 uh, or 304,000 tons uh, per year locally so uh, that's that's our national demand and that's leaving us with a, a negative figure of 215,000 tons so the the local varieties that are not suitable for export uh, can then be produced to uh, meet this uh, deficit so this uh, graph and tabulation is, is is just to show how we've been doing over the years in terms of uh, production so you can see there from 2011 to 29 to 2019 that we recorded our highest production in uh, 2017 then 2018 it was low then um, 2019 uh, we, we had 88,248 uh, tons so could be uh, issues to do with um, uh, climate change, uh, drought, uh, that have resulted in the uh, reduction in, in, in production. Uh, then uh, also our areas uh, under uh, cultivation or under sweet potatoes, we have also noticed an increase in, in 2017 to about 50,000 uh, hectares. Then in 2019 um, to it went down to, to 17,000. So this clearly shows that there is an opportunity uh, to meet the, the, the local demand um, and uh, the deficit of about 215,000 tons. So for those, for those varieties that uh, are not suitable for, 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 for export um, can also uh, fill in the, the gap. Then um, going to the provincial contribution to, to the national output, it shows that um, Mashonaland Land East had the highest, which is about 27% in terms of production. Then Midlands, uh, it was 26% of the national production. Then we had Manika Land with 19%. Then um, uh, Matabele and South, at 12% of the not, of, of the national or the total uh, output. So these are, uh, are the highlights of, um, of the production and consumption uh, trends. So we go back to the issue of risk management. I'm trying to rush through the presentation just because of, uh, of our time. So we start off by defining risk. So risk in agriculture or in farming uh, as a business is, is defined as the future uncertainty about deviation from expected earnings or expected in, uh, income or outcome. So that's basically the definition. So risk is actually classified into four uh, major categories, and that's your production risk, your marketing price risk, your legal or environment risk, and also your human resource risk. So if we go to uh, the production risk, this is to do with mostly variations that, that affect your, your expected yield. And these can include your pest problems, your weeds problems, your disease problems, your climatic issues. And that has been affecting us uh, as a country due to climate change. So that's on, on production uh, risk. There are so many ways oh, that you can follow to mitigate uh, production risks and we'll discuss in the last slide. Then there's also market risk and this is to do with prices or maybe uh, you produce your, your sweet potatoes and there's no market. You end up with lots and lots and tons of sweet potatoes and there's no market. That's a big risk, especially after a huge investment of about 2,600 per hectare. So there must be, be ways that, that you need to follow as a farmer to mitigate 
such risks. And also under market, we also have price risk. Uh, in our projections, we, we talked about the 40 cents per kg. But maybe when you produce due to market dynamics, there's oversupply of, of sweet potatoes. You might end up selling your sweet potatoes, you know, like what happened to cabbages recently. Some ended up selling cabbages for 10 pound, whilst their projections were more than 30 cents US per unit. So you need to factor that as, as you plan your sweet potato business. Then there are also financial and credit risks, and, and these are to do with financing your, your businesses, especially considering that the cycle of sweet potatoes and also other agricultural enterprises takes long periods rather. Uh, to generate income. So sometimes uh, we need financing uh, and where uh, we may fail to pay back uh, the loans, that's risk involved. Uh, and also maybe where we fail to meet the minimum requirements to apply for credit, that's also risk that needs to, to be managed. There's also institutional and, and, and uh, political risks uh, to do with uh, the local policy and also regulations that may be put in place by the government or maybe to do with tax laws to do with the regulations on, on chemical use then climatic and other challenges uh, you know just recently we had well, we actually in, in in a problem corona or covid 19 pandemic has caused a lot of issues we have seen a lot of farmers stuck with uh, with their produce failing to reach out to to the consumers so we need to factor in all these risks before we go into into production. So there are a number of ways that you can use or that you can follow to minimize the risks. And the first one is to use insurance. And this arrangement is where you share your risk with the insurer and your insurer is is, is, is prepared to take the risk and help you in the event of the unforeseen occurrence or risk that may be for your, your business. So it is also important to, to get training on good risk management process. And this might involve issues like or strategies like diversification. Instead of going for a single crop, you also do other crops as well and maybe animal production. Then another way to mitigate risk or to manage risk is contract farming where you put in place contracts or your agreements in, in, in black and white before going into actual production. That actually addresses the, the market risks. So in brief, that's, that's your risks, uh, your risk management, your production trends, and your gross margin. Agribusiness Media, you can get in touch with us on our different platforms. We have Agribusiness TV, and that's co-hosting with CVO Institute for this webinar. Then we have an agribusiness magazine. It's free, very interactive digital publication that you can receive via email or through our WhatsApp platforms. Then also our agribusiness directory where you can just tap in, search for any company or service that you need or even products, then uh, they can show up. So it's also available online and offline. So you can follow us on our Facebook page, that's Agribusiness ZW or Agribusiness Talk, and also on our Twitter platform. Okay, um, thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity. My name is Adirai Mabaya, and I'm an agroindustry potential farmer. Um, due to the, to the circulating message of Mr. Ne Dr. Nigel Chanakira that was circulating on WhatsApp saying sweet potato is, um, is an easy crop which requires less resources yet it brings you back much revenue. And my also being a health fanatic, um, I'm an uh, environmental health scientist by profession, so I just thought I should just do something along those lines in um, in a bit to ensure that we are the healthy nation and actually realizing that the prices of uh, bread were on the uprise, I then decided to embark on this thing and initially I wanted to do a regret variety and um, whilst consulting with the different research institutes with um, Grasslands, Marondera, and then Matopo research, I didn't realize the time they were giving me 
to actually uh, secure the the binds I wanted was going was taking forever, and I I didn't have much land. I didn't have many resources, but I really wanted to land on the job. So um, uh, my grandmother gave me her communal land in Dombosha, and then eventually I I got the seeds that the vines from uh, a nearby farmer. Uh, of course, they took price and then embarked on the journey um, that was in January, the beginning of January. And uh, I had a lot to learn, I have to tell you, because I didn't do any soil testing, I didn't have any irrigation in place, but I just jumped, <laughs> jumped uh, from the roof and wanted to get things uh, going. So um, my timing then was not so good because the rains last year, uh, last season, were not so good, especially in Dobosha. That meant my yields eventually were on the low. And uh, of course, the pests and diseases, because I was the only one, almost uh, um, only one who was doing that crop in, in our area. That meant most, I, I had uh, difficulties with pests and diseases and I had to lose my revenue to those in as much as I, I had used some chemicals. At the same time, um, when I was about to sell my produce, the pandemic came in because initially I wanted to um, to focus more on the diabetic patients and the, the people from the uh, religious sector, the Masoe sector, who don't take bread, those were my target market. But then um, transportation was an issue during the, the 21 day lockdown, and that meant my produce took long uh, in the soil. But then eventually I had to come up with plan B that is selling to the nearby individuals. And by then I was just using a uh, butter trade. That is, you give, I give you the sweet potato in a bucket and in return you give me um, maize in that bucket. So that is actually how I managed to recall all the expenses, I, um, all the money that I used. And um, eventually that's the money I'm using to uh, start my cropping season this year. And um, I would encourage everybody to get into this industry because it's so exciting. You don't have much um, sleepless nights, but you have to put in all the effort. You have to have this spirit in you that I have to make it. I will make it and things will just work out right. At the same time, I would advise everybody to secure their own funds because there's so much money in selling the vines I mean, other than the end product. There's so much money that one can get from just selling the vines themselves before even the crop is ready, the final product is ready. So uh, for me, I realized I didn't have much resources back in Domboshawa, but I had to take my, my vines from Domboshawa and plant them here in Arari such that this cropping season I just take them from Arari back to Domboshawa and that means I'll be having my own vines at the same time selling to others who are in need of soil. So it's a very viable business and it can be done only that you need to put all the effort and uh, look into it as a business not necessarily for fun because for me I'm opportunities like the ones that were being presented only that I came in late I joined the meeting later uh, from Zim trade that was such an insightful presentation uh, for me and I think that's something that we boy especially with uh, with us youngsters and even the people who are older than us who want to venture into farming I would really encourage you to get into sweet potato farming I think that's why I had Okay, thank you, Roland, and thank you um, to our farmer who's just given an invitation. I think she uh, started 
2018-2019 agricultural season, if I'm not mistaken, or 2019-2020 agricultural season. Um, and she was just talking about the challenges that she's had uh, marketing the produce with COVID-19. Um, but I think uh, at the end of the day, you're still saying you were able to read um, your, your in, the inputs that you put in, the money that you put in. Um, so now I think we'll go into some questions. Um, there's some questions that were posted on the chat platform uh, and we'll try to answer those as quickly as possible. We just have a few minutes remaining. Um, the first question was uh, posted by Richard uh, Rwafa, um, and he's saying moles are one of the problematic pests in sweet potato to the Zimbabwe fertilizer company, um, Mr. Uh, Gonzo, uh, can you please um, help us to determine how to deal with this pest? So if Mr. Gonzo is still on the call, maybe you could answer that question. And then uh, uh, the next question um, was uh, to Beverly, um, just as Mr. Gonzo is preparing, if you're still there, uh, what are the quality for export on pesticide residues? So either Beverly or maybe somebody from uh, Zimtrade could, could answer that. Um, and then we'll take another two questions. Okay, Th thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, like I said in my presentation that the, the, the most important the pest, insect pest rather, is the, the sweet potato weevil. Um, we encourage our farmers to use cultural methods, for example, uh, practice crop rotation and use of uh, shoot tips at, at, at planting. And uh, then uh, for the chemicals, we advise farmers to use uh, your clopyrifos or, or, or copper, particularly during the time when your crop is, uh, is, is flowering. So the sweet potato weevil, the one that the 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 the, the lava is the one that causes much of the damage because it on the tuber, uh, what they call pongwe. So we encourage our farmers to do cultural practices and to use of for your ganophosphates like propyrifos and your carbamates like carbamates. Okay, all right. And then um, the, uh, maybe you is there any um, uh, something specific that you can use, um, maybe not necessarily just for a sweet potato crop, but I think we're talking about molds in the field. Um, I think it's so maybe there's a specific uh, pesticide you can refer that person to, to that. Um, uh, pesticides and then maybe they could try that. I don't know if you have something specific you can recommend for him. Yes, for, 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 for moles, we encourage our farmers to use uh, what we call the Fumafos tablets or gas toxin tablets. Uh, they are popularly known as Mapirice Makonzo. So they just uh, uh, look for for the for the barrels of the moles and then they throw in the, the tablets in there and cover. Uh, the gas toxin tablet is it's, it's a fumigant. It kills by 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 vapor, you know, action. So they have to cover the barrels after placing the, the tablets inside and cover. Uh, the moles will die of, of, of suffocation and uh, of, of 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 the poison that will be uh, from the gas of the of the, of the tablets. And then, okay. then we obviously, then we obviously have your 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 fung your fungal diseases, which I indicated that they also need to use cultural practices to control them. Uh, then they can invoke a uh, use of pesticides if they are more severe. Uh, the the, um, the preventive sprays of copper, your your mango zip, your anthraco. Uh, or you can cure them using the curative products like etafenoconazole or tepiconazole or even the, 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 the metalaxy. Okay, all right. And then um, the people are asking for your WhatsApp number. I don't know if you're comfortable to share it or your yes. email. Yes, uh, yes. My WhatsApp number is 772 422 
0772-422-172. I'll repeat, 0772-422-172. And the email address is gonzoz at zfc.co.zw. Gonzoz at zfc.co.zw. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, another question from Rudo Mbulawa um, says, uh, I think this was to Beverly or to Kupakwashe uh, from Trade. Um, is asking uh, what are the quality requirements uh, for export produce uh, on pesticide residues? So maybe what's the minimum um, uh, quantity of pesticides? Um, and you know, maybe if you can give an indication of that. Um, if you don't have those figures off the top of your head, is there somewhere where that information is available? Maybe you could refer Rudo to that um, that uh, source. Um, thank you, Belinda. Uh, as I said, my focus has been on um, meeting global gap certification requirements, and uh, as we are practicing organic production methods. We have been doing research on uh, poison-free um, pest control. So uh, the latest has been, for my research, there are various um, products uh, crop through crop rotation that can minimize the infestation of all these um, pests, like uh, nuta, rodents, rats, and everything else, because you must remember some of these chemicals are poison. And as you are putting poison in the soil, you are also poisoning the root of your crop. Um, I am in discussion with the, a company called Zim, uh, Zim Agro, who are also looking at importing um, chemicals that are compliant with uh, international requirements. One of the crops to grow in your intercropping or uh, crop rotation, uh, for example, would be chilies. You can intercrop with uh, plants like marigold, which also deal with other pesticides that, uh, that are attracted to the, the tasty bulbs. But they, I think as time goes on, maybe um, Zim Trade and uh, the fertilizer companies will also start introducing products and give a list of what products are, are required. Possibly that's why the organization PUM will be of benefit as well, when they, if they can advise us also what uh, insecticides or pesticides are acceptable. Okay, all right. Then um, there's a question here from Ben Clare, um, and he's asking which varieties give the highest yield. So uh, I'm not sure who can take that question, uh, which varieties give the highest yield. And then also related to that, if Victor was saying, where can we get the yellow flesh varieties, vines for the yellow flesh varieties? Um, well, there are various uh, farmers who are producing the, what I call the orange flesh varieties. There are also yellow flesh varieties. But as, um, I can't remember his name from, the train mentioned the varieties at the moment are Bureaugard, Covington, and what is not on the list is Georgia Jet. Most of those varieties have been under research about two years ago. Um, Kutsaga also produces those vines, and individual farmers like myself. Um, at the moment, those are being tested as for, for virus as virus free, and they are other orange varieties for the local market. Uh, as I said, on our women's group, women in 
agricultural union, sweet potato group. Um, we do have uh, people advertising their product. Okay, all right. Um, okay, all right, that's fine. And so anyone who wants to join, uh, that could be open to men as well. I know you keep calling it the women's group, but is it open to men as well? This, um, the group Women in Agriculture WOW group is specifically for women. Okay. There are other, uh, other groups, uh, Sweet Potato Value Chain, quite a number of groups. There's a group called Mr. Bambaira for, as a mixed group, but as I said, we uh, operate as a uh, synergy and in collaboration, so a lot of the information is shared because uh, my, my area of interest is to get people export ready, starting from ground zero and uh, with the concept small is beautiful and then diversify and grow from there. It takes about three to five years to, to be compliant. That is if you are, are planting in crops that have chemical residue, but if you have virgin land and you've gone through your soil testing, you might be in a better position to get onto the bandwagon earlier. The importance of uh, being export ready and specific requirements is that every step of the way, record keeping is essential. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. And just for those um, who joined late, um, uh, Beverly number is um, 0772908901. Um, so for any ladies who want to join those groups, um, maybe you could also refer anyone who wants to uh, join any of the other groups um, that you just mentioned, uh, where maybe if the men don't fit into the ladies group. Um, you can redirect them. Um, I'll just uh, say out some other um, uh, email addresses. They are also available in the chat platform. So, Kupakoshe uh, Miti from ZimTrade, his email address is kmiti at zimtrade.co.cw. So you can get in touch with them if you want to get the assistance that he was talking about, about the consultants who are able to teach you um, even remotely uh, or to come onto your farm. Um, we also have a presentation by Mr. Gonzo from um, ZFC. So that email address is gonzo z at zfc.co.zw. And then we had another presentation by um, Mr. Chikanda from the Agricultural Marketing Authority. That one is uh, mchikanda at ama.co.zw. And they are in Mount Pleasant, Eight Lehman Road. Um, so if you want to get more information, you can um, uh, get that uh, those uh, details from there, uh, or to email them. Um, the, or to email them directly. Uh, somebody's asking for that phone number again: um, 0772-908-901. I'll see if I can post it in the uh, chat now. Um, but if there are any more questions, uh, or I don't see any more questions, Rollins, maybe I'll hand over to you. Um, just as I said at the beginning, this presentation was being hosted by Civil Institute and Agribusiness Media. Agribusiness Media is a free platform for farmers, giving free information to farmers on how you can develop your farming enterprises and grow in the area of farming. If you want more information, access to information, Roland will be able to give you those sites even right now. And again, please post your email addresses into the chat and then we will send you a link to the presentation, which will also be available on the Agribusiness um, uh, uh, Facebook page. Um, but you can also get a link to uh, the physical presentation which will probably be in a OneDrive folder. Um, so either of those, you can, you can access it that way. And then also we can send you emails with the presentations that have been done today. So Roland, I'll hand over to you. Unless there are any other questions, um, Roland, you can go for it. Many thanks, Linda. And I uh, would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone 
who has participated in this uh, webinar and um, uh, it went very well and we are very excited that it has benefited uh, and we believe uh, it will go a long way in transforming your farm uh, businesses. So thank you, uh, Mr. Zwana Gonzo from ZFC, the head agronomist of um, Zimbabwe Fertilizer Company, and also uh, Beverly, we thank you very much for your contribution. And Mr. Chikanda from uh, Agricultural Marketing Authority, thank you for the presentation. Washa Mizi, Zim Trade, uh, thank you very much. And Dadirai Mabaya, thank you for the keys to, to success and for the encouragement uh, on, on um, uh, how best farmers uh, can run successful farm businesses. Then Belinda uh, and Sevio Institute, thank you very much for, for coordinating this uh, event. It was a success. So thank you very much for, uh, for joining in, everyone. And we'll share the, uh, a link to, to download the, the recording. And also, these are weekly webinars. This was Sweet Potatoes. And next week, we'll be having um, uh, another webinar on a different uh, enterprise farm business. So thank you so much. Uh, enjoy your day. We have also posted a link uh, for you to join our WhatsApp groups as well. Thank you very much.